بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله سن أنا تبي ساء in this masjid between these two beautiful brothers may Allah Azza wa Jalla preserve them and protect them to present this to present this special program nurtured by the Quran a tale or a story of two brothers insha Allah the life of these two brothers. Well, we're going to delve, we're going to ask questions about their life, we're going to find out about their journey with the Quran, and we are going to learn and derive lessons for us, inshallah, to inspire us and help us with our journey. But as, is, as this program is about the Quran, and as we are in the house of the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, there was no other way to start than with asking one of our mashayikh for a short recitation, and uh, I get the luxury of choosing, so I opted to start with Sheikh Abdul Rahman, inshallah, since he's our guest. تفضل شيخ قراءة. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. الله. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما ويدعو الإنسان بالشر دعاءه بالخير وكان الإنسان عجولا وجعلنا الليل والنهار آيتين فمحونا آية الليل وجعلنا آية النهار مبصرة لتبتغوا فضلا من ربكم لتبتغوا فضلا من ربكم ولتعلموا عدد السنين والحساب وكل شيء فصلناه تفصيلا وكل إنسان ألزمناه طائره في عنقه ويخرج له يوم القيامة كتابا يلقاه منشورا اقرا كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا متر فيها ففسقوا فيها وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا متر فيها ففسقوا فيها فحق عليها القول فدمرناها تدميرا وكم أهلكنا من القرون من بعد نوح وكفى بربك بذنوب عباده خبيرا بصيرا صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله تبارك الله <coughs> May Allah bless our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Rahman And I think it's only right that if we've heard from one of them, we hear from the other one, inshallah. So moving to Shaykh Jamal, inshallah. And so we can hear a short recitation, inshallah. And then we can sort of properly introduce the program and start asking these questions and putting these brothers under pressure a little bit, inshallah. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من كان يريد العاجلة عجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد ثم جعلنا له جهنم يصلاها مذموما مدحورا ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا كلا نمد هؤلاء وهؤلاء من عطاء ربك وما كان عطاء ربك محظورا انظر كيف فضلنا بعضهم على بعض وللآخرة أكبر درجات وأكبر تفضيلا لا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتقعد مذموما مخذولا وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا رَبُّكُمُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ إِنْ تَكُونُوا صَالِحِينَ فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لِلْأَوَّابِينَ غَفُورًا وآت ذا القربى حقه والمسكين وبن السبيل ولا تبذر تبذيرا إن المبذرين كانوا إخوان الشياطين وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا Sadaq Allahu al-Azim. MashaAllah, tabarakAllah. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless both our mashayikh, inshaAllah. And I think just a quick recap and introduction that we are going to be speaking about the journey of these brothers with the Qur'an and how they were nurtured through this book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And to my right, obviously, is Al-Ustad, Shaykh Jamal Abdul Nasir. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless him and reward him. And to my left is our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Rahman, the son of a Shaykh Abdul Rashid, the son of a Shaykh Ali Sufi, may Allah Azza wa Jal bless them and reward them both. I wanted to kind of break the ice a little bit, break the tension. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you some questions and I've decided to mix it up a little bit. So some of these questions are gonna be a matter of um, sort of a, cho a choice between one or the other. And the second, and the other type of questions are gonna be some questions related to Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi, inshallah, just to see which one knows him better, the student or the son. So inshallah, just the first question, starting. What style of recitation do you like more, Hijazi or the Egyptian style? Quick fire. Hijazi, I think. Yeah. Same, Hijazi. Yeah, <laughs> This is uh, probably the slowest start to a quick fire round ever. <laughs> well, Bismillah, we'll work our way up. All right, mixing it up. Which year was Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi born? That's <laughs> Aiba. MashaAllah. See? Well, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Google seems to think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Mashallah. The Sheikh has Wikipedia. 64. Has Mashallah. Mashallah. Hafizullah. Okay. The second thing is, which riwayah do you prefer? Or uh, Hafs or Warsh? Personal preference, of course, all of this kalam of Allah, and we love it and we uh, adore all of it. But personal preference? 
at the moment ورش ان شاء الله وانت شيخ كان اسوي سمزنات ابو جعفر الله سمون هاز تو اولويز بي ديفرنت ما شاء الله ويل كم باك وي هاف ا فيو مور باس اوف ذيس كويك فاير كويشنز ان شاء الله ثروت ذا نايت بس سينس ذيس از ا نايت ابوت ذا جيرني وذ ذا قران اي ونت تو تيك ات ايفري جيرني هاز ا ستارتنج بوينت اند اي ونت تو تيك ات باك تو ذا ستارتنج بوينت اند اسك يو وات از يور ايرليست ميموري وذ ذا قران whether it's listening to it or reciting it or encountering it, whatever it may be. And starting with Shaykh Iman, inshallah, as you are to my right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'du. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alaykum wa For me, uh, that question, I would uh, answer it in two parts. As for my household, Uh, that is where the person normally resides the most and spends most time. Uh, then my earliest memories until now, uh, it is the attachment of my mother, Hafidah uh, Allah, to the Quran al-Kareem. Uh, my mother, uh, she, like everybody else's mothers, she is extremely attached to the recitation of the Quran specifically. And currently, right now, uh, as I've grown older, I've understood uh, the depth of how many hours on a daily basis she puts in. And I would not be uh, exaggerating if I said it is maybe more than a third of the day. So if the day is 24 hours, then it is eight hours or more. And I am not exaggerating when I say that. I have tried to calculate. And this is something that touched me growing up. Uh, because the person that anybody loves the most in this world is the mother more than anybody else so to see the mother like this this will play a great role in the uh, child and the son coming closer to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's with regards to my house with regards to outside of the house then for sure it is the influence of my uh, first teacher uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir uh, Hassan Hafizahullah who is currently residing in Mogadishu, uh, Somalia, and this man, to me, when I was growing up, I saw him to be that which the household of the Prophet ﷺ said about the Prophet ﷺ, and, and I mean that. He would be teaching the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, standing with the Qur'an at night, and all the while implementing the Qur'an in his actions, in his statements, in his character, in his beauty, and that really made me come closer to the Qur'an. If there was one person that I would say, and this is the final part to my answer, who really touched me the most overall with my journey with the Quran, uh, then it will be uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid, Sheikh Ali Sufi, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. I can, I can put it as beautiful as Sheikh Jamal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. أولا يعني نتشرف بلقائكم ما شاء الله يعني it's an honor to be here so جزاكم الله خير في هذه الاستضافة يعني I think my journey with the Quran is you know it's pretty obvious يعني we grew up in a house household يعني it's full of Quran so my father is الله خير was Hafizahullah, Allah, and he was uh, an influence. So growing up, going to the masjid, uh, you know, seeing uh, a lot of students, a lot of uh, big sheikhs, you know, coming to him. So that made us, you know, uh, subhanAllah, love the Quran. And growing up, Qatar was, uh, I grew up in Qatar. So Qatar at that time, they were really focusing on uh, memorizing the Quran. Every masjid has uh, had uh, a tahfid. They, we call it tahfid. You guys call it madrasa, I think, yeah. So every masjid had a, a tahfid. And from, I think from my early age, yani my, since I was five or six, we started going to the masjid and then sitting with the uh, uh, you know, teachers. And um, alhamdulillah, that uh, also listening to Quran, you know, listening to Quran was a very, you know, major impact on me. Uh, it made it easy for me to, you know, memorize the Quran, alhamdulillah. So I think that's, that's, the, that's my journey with the Quran. MashaAllah. You mentioned listening to Quran, Shaykh. Who was your favorite Qari growing up? Growing up? Uh, you 
can't say your dad, that's like. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sheikh Muhammad Ayyub. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Rahimahullah. Rahmatullah. Want to Sheikh? Growing up, I, now it's different, but growing up, it was definitely Sheikh uh, Al Manshawi. Rahmatullah Ali. Rahmatullah Ali. Um, I think just wanted to, it's a bit of a reflection. Yani, MashaAllah, both of you have recently led Taraweeh. I believe you even led Taraweeh together, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, you and Sheikh Abdul Rahman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so mashallah. So I think this is maybe taking it back a little bit. Now that you lead Taraweeh, uh, and I think just going back, do you ever remember just praying behind someone and having that feeling that mashallah, this person is, is praying the Taraweeh, leading the whole prayer? Do you, do you remember a feeling like that, that you think that one day maybe I can reach that position? For me, the first person is uh, uh, my Ustad who taught me the Quran, Sheikh Abdul Qadir. I remember I, I used to think growing up as a very miskin child, I would look at my sheikh, I'm very small, and the sheikh, I would look at him and I would look at his face and I would say, and his head, and I would say, I don't know how the whole Quran can be in this man's head. <laughs> how is the whole Quran in one person's head? One person. And the Quran is on 114 surah. So I don't understand that, but it amazed me. And the other thing that amazed me to illustrate it as well is that from my observation in the madrasa we grew up in all the other teachers i would see them listening to the students with the mushaf uh, not to say that they weren't able to listen to the students from memory but that's what i saw but when i would see him he would listen to them by memory so this one's reading surah al-kahf and this one's reading surah to uh, al-naba and this one's reading surah to nahal and they're reading different places in the quran and everything's the same for him everything is the same i'm thinking isn't there one surah that you need the mushaf for never did i see him take a mushaf so that's where it started for me, Taraweeh, uh, because that's what you asked, that's what, that was the first person that I was influenced by. He would just go in the Taraweeh, ask where do I start from, where do I stop, and he would enter the Salah. That's for me, inshaAllah. So, should I answer? Well, it's pretty obvious. And my father was uh, always, you know, the person that we look up to. And, you know, definitely I can never finish, you know, his place, but, and he, it was a very um, uh, encouragement, you know, to memorize the Quran. And obviously the Quran is the biggest sharaf in the world, like in the whole existence. If you have the Quran, then, you know, it's just enough that hopefully, inshallah, يعني, uh, that we become Ahlullah wa khasatu. And that's the most important thing. <laughs> you mentioned the madrasa slash tahfid uh, slash duksi slash whatever you want to call it, inshallah. But do you remember the first day going in? You mentioned that you were there for five, six years old. Do you remember your first yes. day? Yes. Can you tell us يعني, how it felt going in? Was it intimidating that you are starting this journey? Did you believe then that you are going to become a hafid and an imam and mashallah qiraat? Well, definitely not. Like the first time I, I went there, I thought, oh my God, I can't play anymore. I can't play outside. I'm going to be stuck in this field. Oh, of course, uh, it was very hard uh, growing up. But I remember the first day when I went there, the Sheikh asked me, uh, how, much do you, like, how much do you know of the Quran? And I, I remember I told him at that time, uh, I was in Surah Al-Mursalat. So... When I got there, I said, um, you know, I'm in Surah Al-Mursalat. And he was very excited. He said, oh, you're very young. You have, you, you memorize Juz Amma. MashaAllah. It's going to be easy for you. Uh, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. It was a lot of, you know, uh, so it was a long journey. Alhamdulillah, I finished the Quran when I was 12, 12 years old. But just khatamt al Quran, not hafidh, because... Uh, the hifz, you know, according to my father, is when you are, yani, when you don't make mistakes, when you can recite the whole Quran, and I don't think I've reached that point yet. So. For me, I can't recall uh, the first time I went to the madrasa, uh, but I want to just add maybe a few more points to what uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman mentioned. Um, and I think maybe most people who are here and also watching online uh, have met or at least seen uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid and uh, I always mention this when you see the Sheikh 
uh, he's a very lovable character. Uh, he's very receptive, very smiley, very nice and pleasant. I'm sure everybody would agree so. Uh, he would come, he came to this message, for example, once and was very busy when he came. And I remember the brother suggested that we take the sheikh through here and just get him out. And he didn't like that. But he was torn. So he didn't like the fact that he was leaving everybody. But he didn't also like the fact that the people of the masjid suggested that. And if he says no, then he may go against what they want as well. So I was seeing how he was dealing with the situation. Here he wants to deal with the people and meet them. And over here, he doesn't want to give any bad impression to the masjid. So the sheikh, what he did was, he went through here, he went with the masjid and what they said, and then he came around and then he came. <laughs> so then I was looking, I was thinking, I need to take lessons from this. I said, he's trying to make everybody happy. And that's genuinely how he is. But having said that, now adding to what Sheikh Abdul Rahman, he said, and he's more befitting to talk about the sheikh than me, I've seen a lot of big imams personally meet the sheikh and he will sit down with them and read the Quran with them and I've seen the sheikh tell them that they're not Huffad yet so as lovable as the character is he's also a man of knowledge and this science is a, ma is a science that he has really mastered so he's a person by the way when he's saying that you haven't really mastered the Quran properly this is a person that perhaps won't make a mistake so the sheikh he has a specific stance with certain things specifically with and Abdul Rahman can tell us more with the harakat of the ayat. So he's a sheikh, he says, your hifth of the Qur'an has to be hifth al-kalimat and hifth al-harakat. So if you read the whole Qur'an with no mistake, the sheikh will ask you, join this ayah to the next. If you can't join the ayah to the next, but you know the whole Qur'an with no mistake, to him you're not a hafid yet. And he would say, the most you can claim is that you are nisfu hafidin. You are half of a hafid. And that breaks a person's heart. Imagine a person who can lead taraweeh and doesn't make a mistake. And then a master in Qur'an says, you're half a half with. That's maximum. Uh, but it shows that they have understood the Qur'an on a level that we haven't. I just wanted to add that point. Yeah. In your journey of Hafs, Shaykh, who was your biggest inspiration? What were, who or what was your biggest inspiration in Hafs? I'm memorizing. For me, it was my brother Muhammad, uh, the oldest, because uh, I remember that he was, he's the only one uh, in my like obviously my brothers that my father gave him the you know he he's he certified him he said uh, he's very good so i always uh, i can't say obviously my father because uh, i have to choose someone that i can compare myself to so i could say my brother muhammad uh, he's mashallah so, uh, uh, maybe he's uh, very genius but <laughs> you know it's he's my brother so i can look up to him and I think, mashallah, tabarakallah, um, he gave the Quran uh, his time, and and alhamdulillah, Allah rewarded him with the with the itqan. So that was my uh, biggest inspiration, like someone that I know. Yeah. I wanted to add uh, to that as well. I personally haven't seen anybody when we don't add the mashayikh from other than the, the, the big ulama, Muhammad is a sheikh as well, but other than the big ulama of Quran, I haven't seen anybody that knows the Quran like Muhammad, the eldest son of the sheikh. Personally, I haven't. The way he leads with the sheikh in Ramadan, it's an ayah min ayatillah. The way his Quran and the articulation and the mastery and the khushur and the voice and the tajweed and everything. And we're talking about three Jews. And we're talking about every night. We're talking about Ramadan. And we're talking about the middle of the night. And it's a task. It's not something simple. And I don't think personally, uh, this is an advice to myself, because I'm not on that level, and an advice to everybody who's here, that that can just be attained. I genuinely don't believe it. It can be attained just by revision. I think the main way it's attained is by tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do I mean? If one of us now decide that we are going to read the Quran, read the Quran, read the Quran, keep repeating, yes, it's true, this is a means, this is a sabab, la shak, it's going to help you. But you have to have something else that you are doing on your journey with the Quran between you and Allah. And you have to be a very truthful person with the Quran for Allah to bless you like that. Just reading, for example, if 
university and studies, we just have to revise, revise to pass. We can't just say the Quran is the same thing and revise, revise, and you're going to be like that. The Quran is from the skies. The Quran is from Allah. So it requires more. So if your heart, for example, is a heart that is not ready to take the Quran, but you are just reading it, reading it, you may find that you never meet your end goal. So I believe that he's, from the, all the people I've seen, I haven't seen anybody like it. And I advise, if you want to see for yourselves, inshallah ta'ala, that you go on YouTube and you listen to the Qiyamul Layl prayers from Qatar. It's all there. And just listen, inshallah ta'ala. But this is a thing for me, inshallah. The same. Inshallah, Shaykh, I think just asking, since this is for inspiration for, for the listeners and people that are watching, was there ever a time in your journey of memorizing the Quran that you thought that this is too difficult to achieve, that maybe I should, I, I, I'm not cut out for this, and what helped you persevere? And if not, then how did you maintain the mutabara all the way through? Uh, me personally, I don't remember any time feeling like I wanted to quit. Uh, that's probably because of the Sheikh I mentioned before, Sheikh Abdul Qadir. Uh, when the uh, teacher is a teacher who supports the student and just doesn't listen to him, supports him, reignites passion in his heart, reminds him of what he's doing, explains it to him in a way that the student didn't know before, then the student will keep going and he'll never quit. And a week or two may go by, maybe his Quran isn't quite there, maybe he is unable to memorize, but he won't quit. And it is because that he was blessed with an amazing teacher. But if the teacher is very lax and he sees the student to be lax and they're both lax together, then it's very easy for that student to quit and go somewhere else. And he may think that I'm not cut out for this. So I don't remember ever feeling like that. But the thing that the Sheikh used to tell us all of the time is to remember the goal. Like it was mentioned earlier, Ahlullahi wa khasatu. To remember the goal that you are going to become from the people of Allah. And to remember the goal that this is the greatest sharaf and the greatest reward in the dunya and in the akhirah. And to just remember what you're doing and you're inheriting that which the prophets they inherited, which is revelation. When you hear all this stuff, you don't want to busy yourself with anything else in the dunya anymore. Anything else. It doesn't mean that you become a person who leaves the dunya, but your heart's not inclined to any of this anymore. Your heart only wants Quran. It doesn't want anything else. That's what helped me the most on my journey. Um, I think um, it's after you've uh, after I finished the Quran, yani after I did the khatma, and uh, the journey for itqan, it was very hard because growing up we had like so many like so many um, temptations, and you just wanna uh, you just wanna sometimes you just get to the point when you are reciting reciting you're making the same mistakes and then you just say what's the point and he i will never be mutqin but like uh, sheikh jamal said it's it's tawfiq min allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you just it just clicks it just hits you one time and then you start and then that's when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know gives you tawfiq then it becomes easier for you there are some ajza or some suwar I never thought I could uh, read it without making a mistake. Uh, even like Al-Ajza uh, Al-Akhira, like I mean, Surah Al-Taghabun was, uh, was the hardest surah for me, يعني, even though I'm, I finished the Quran. But SubhanAllah, like, it's the tawfiq min Allah. And then like Sheikh Jamal يعني, said it, uh, it's, it's always, what is your goal? Are you memorizing the Quran for, for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or for others? If you do it for others, you will never reach that. You will never memorize the Quran. You will never, um, يعني, uh, يعني you will never master the Quran. And always, you know, your goal has to be, I'm doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only for Allah. I don't want nothing else. Like, I don't want to be uh, famous. I don't want to be a sheikh. I don't want to be anything. When you do that, everything will come. All of that, this is just jawa'iz and reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for having a pure intention. Then everything comes with it. And that's, that's the journey. MashaAllah, JazakAllah khair. I want to open the floor. Does anyone have any questions for either of our mashayikh related to the journey of memorizing the Quran, inshallah? And the brother there put his hand up straight away, inshallah, so he can ask. 
Luciana. سورة النحل نعم it varies so that means by the way what that means is every time I'm reading the Quran maybe it's a surah that I stick with so at the moment it's probably I think surah sutaha I want to add something to that so why did I say surah al-nahl is Allah, uh, first of all, the Quran is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, to the humanity, to everything, you know. So when we read Surah, uh, why do we memorize the Quran? We memorize the Quran to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling you about Himself, His Almighty. He's telling you about His Ni'am. They call Surah Al-Nahl, it has uh, another name, it has, it has a different name, but what I know is Surah Al-Ni'am. They call it Surah Al-Ni'am, the blessings. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala talks so much about Himself in, in, in this Surah that you say, you know when you talk about yourself to someone, you want, a, you want that person to love you or to like you. So, and, and you only do that because you need something from that person. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala doesn't need anything from any, for, Everything else is his creation. So what does he need uh, from us when he tells us about himself? Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, from, from the beginning, from the beginning to the end of, of, of yani that, um, whenever he talks about himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's just, you just, yani, it shocks you. So that's why, subhanAllah, surah al-Nahl, is very big and and when you understand it subhanallah it's it's very hard to just go by it and never yani, لازم تتدبر القرآن. you have to uh, think about the quran think about the ayat so that's why surah al-nahl is it's very uh, it has a very effect to my to myself we need to ask the shaykh to come back and do a tafsir of surah al-nahl inshallah do you yeah. agree <laughs> shaykh jamal is here for the brother inshallah in this way shaykh tafadda bismillah yeah. Who's talking? Uh, uh, isn't your, uh, your favorite recital or Amir recital? Now? The, 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 the one you, you, you prefer most recital. Uh, you share with that, you like that. Now I. Uh, now I the other question is uh, what about uh, the Tajweed in the Quran? We already do the uh, Tafid. What's your view on the Tajweed, the Tajweed of the Quran? Yeah. So my favorite sheikh uh, that I love to listen to, Sheikh Muhammad Rifat, rahimahullah. Uh, because I've never heard, yes, uh, I've never heard someone that, yani, when you listen to the recitation, you just live in a different world. You feel like you're, you're not in this dunya anymore. You feel like you are in, in, in the, the, the sky. You, you are fi samawat. That's what Sheikh Muhammad Rafat Rahimahullah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa jama'ana bihi fi al-firdaus al-a'la. Ameen, ameen. Sheikh Muhammad. Another question, Sheikh Muhammad. Sheikh Muhammad. Sheikh Muhammad, from the scholars of the past, those from the Qudama, but those who are alive today, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid. Um, the brother at the back. What do you think of the That's what I said. I said Sheikh Muhammad Rafat. Sheikh Muhammad Rafat. Uh, inshallah. We in the light we'll do it, inshallah. It's, we'll the class. it's, not, we'll it's not easy. It's not easy. You to mean now? You mean now? This is by the way the Mu'addin of the Masjid. <laughs> the Sheikh Muhammad Matwa. Just just for everybody's uh, information. So the Sheikh is allowed to ask whatever he likes, inshallah. To be honest, we'll it's, it's not a bad idea if you do some mujawad now. I can't do it personally. Yes, then, then this is a promise to be held against Sheikh Jamal for future. And we need to listen to mujawad, inshallah, one day. And Sheikh Abdurrahman. <laughs> With the brother at the back, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.
Uh, there's, there's one thing that everyone asks my father if they want to memorize the Quran. He tells them one thing. He says you have to give the Quran all your time. So when, when, what does that mean? Is that you have to find a way to, like you said, shield yourself from the phone. Obviously the phone right now, the, the phone is the biggest... <laughs> It's the biggest um, distraction. Huh? distraction from memorizing or from doing anything. For not, I'm not talking about the Quran. I'm talking about other things like uh, studying, uh, um, homeworks, whatever. You know. So you have to find that azima. You have to find that strength in yourself to. You know, when you are given the time, like you, you give your uh, the Quran amount of time. In that amount of time, even if you are just revising muraja'ah, if you're doing muraja'ah, when you are reading your word, al word al yomi, you can't. You just f f leave the phone, put it on airplane mode or something, or leave it somewhere you can't even hear a notification or anything, and and then the shaitan will come to you and, and you just want to check. You don't want to do anything, but you want to check who texted you. That text, that text is your distraction. When you look at it, it's, it could be important. But at that time, you just have to ask yourself, what is more important? Is it the Quran? Or is the whatever, you know, uh, is distracting me? So that's how you shield yourself. Um, it's, it, it comes from yourself. Like, it comes from you after you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there's a true story uh, that uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid mentioned, and uh, it's on YouTube as well. Uh, a brother, he came to him and uh, asked him for advice. He said that I'm going to go to Medina and uh, memorize Quran for two years. Uh, so he asked the Sheikh, he said, Mada tansahuni? What do you advise? So the Sheikh, he said, the phone that you have in your hand, I advise you to leave the phone for that time that you are there. Only one advice. So the brother, he said to the Sheikh, if I go abroad, how am I going to contact my family if I have no phone? The Sheikh, he said, you can take a normal phone, don't take a smartphone, leave it. So the brother, he said, I'll do that, inshallah ta'ala, I'll take your advice. And the Sheikh is narrating, and I quote the Sheikh, he said that maybe a month went by, and I received a WhatsApp message from him, indicating he still has a smartphone. So the Sheikh said, I left him, I didn't say anything. Uh, until the two years finished, I asked him, did you complete the memorization of the Qur'an? فَقَالَ لَا He said, no. He said, if I only took your advice. He said, nothing distracted me apart from the phone. So these scholars and these mashayikh, they have aged with the Qur'an. They spent their whole lives with the Qur'an. They know the one advice that they can give, and it's true. Uh, all the scholars say it. Other scholars say it too. They say that every single error has its distraction, and the error of, for us, this distraction that we have in this era is the mobile phone. So if a person can at least limit it, if you can't get rid of it completely, my advice would be to limit it at least. At least when you're memorizing, like Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentioned, at least that time turn it off. At least then. And be more, inshaAllah ta'ala, responsible for your time, and then it will be better, inshaAllah. InshaAllah, Barakallah. Just taking the last question from the brother there, inshaAllah. Yeah. 
the Quran, the whole thing is a miracle. Uh, to prove that it is from Allah and it is real and it is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can make an entire lecture on it and not discuss everything with regards to the miraculous nature of the Quran. One example. The miracle of Islam and the Muslims is that millions of people on the face of the earth from the time of the Prophet ﷺ when the Qur'an was revealed until today, until the end of times, have memorized the Qur'an. And the majority of those people who memorize the Qur'an are non-Arabs. I, for one, am non-Arab. And there are so many people here who memorize the Qur'an who are also non-Arab. Now this hall now, this gathering we are in, it is representing the entire world. There are people here from different countries and backgrounds. So imagine all these people have memorized a book that is that big. Our miracle is that millions of people have memorized our book and the miracle of the other people who follow other ways of life is that if you find one person that's memorized their book, it becomes a miracle. Who's memorized the Bible? You say that to them. Nobody. The day you find somebody who has, the miracle for them is that we found one person. Our miracle, our standard is that it's millions. And their standard is that you don't find anybody. That's a miracle by itself. That's a miracle by itself. And one more. For instance, the Prophet Sallallahu a man who was in Arabia, who lived 1400 years ago, he's talking about speech and revelation that's come from his Lord. And he's telling them this is from Allah Rabbul Alameen. And the content of that information, it cannot be made up. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he says in the Quran, for example, that in the beginning, the skies and the earth, they were together. فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا and so we parted them. No one saw that. Now the sky is above and the earth is below. Allah said that happened after. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that he created the skies and the earth and all that's in between in six days. How is he, alayhi salatu wasalam, informing us of information like this except that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not to mention the way the world is today and the technology that we have today and all of these things that have been mentioned today from scientists and people who are learned that the Quran has indicated to all of these things either directly or indirectly that is a miracle and no other book had this virtue before the Quran it's the Quran that had this virtue no. Yeah, so all these things, uh, the huf, witnessing the Huffad on the globe and traveling the globe and seeing the Musabaqat and the international Quran competitions and seeing how people are from different countries and regions, that is what I have witnessed, I'm saying. But you're right, the Quran is a shifa yeah, yeah. and how the Quran cures, it cures physical problems, <laughs> spiritual problems. People who have been complaining their whole lives and they say we've traveled the earth trying to get a cure, the Quran is read upon them with sincerity and they're cured straight away. So you're right, that is also from the miracles of the Quran al -Karim. My question inshallah will be very short. The Quran, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, of course it has a, an, uh, a barakah. It has a, a, a serious effect on anyone. Because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine if you get a, uh, a message from, from uh, like a, a king or, or a amir or whatever, you know. It has, it has an effect on you. So imagine if it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not kalam al-bashar. It's kalam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it has the same barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it affects everyone when you read the Quran. Even if you, don't, if you don't understand it, it affects you because that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's, that's my answer. Yani you don't need to know a specific barakah or, know, uh, or have a personal... Uh, you know, experience to say, oh, the Quran is, well, like, there's barakah in the Quran. It's just because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would affect you in a good way. 
And Jazakallah khair to all the brothers for the question, questions, inshallah. For anyone that does want to send their questions on Slido, the link is live. And you can use the code Quran, inshallah, the hashtag Quran. Um, I think just going back now that both our mashayikh are in a more advanced position in their journey. And I don't want to praise them too much while they're present. But we all know that Allah, Mubarak, Allah has blessed them with a degree of knowledge in this field of Quran. And ask Allah Azrael to continue to bless them and us, inshallah. So I wanted to ask from the position that you are in, you are in a position to give يعني, the average Muslim and ourselves here some advice. And the first advice is that, I think just that, that now that we are talking about the journey of the Quran, is there an ideal time to start a journey with the Quran? Or يعني, if I've not started when I am young, I've missed the boat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ So, the Quran is, is for everyone to memorize. You don't have to be young, you don't have to be, yeah, you don't have to be young to memorize the Quran. Yes, it's a little bit easier when you are young, when you don't have a lot of, a lot of things on your mind. But anyone can start, you know, memorizing the Quran. I heard one sheikh said, uh, talked about his grandmother. His grandmother, when she was over 70 years old, she started memorizing the Quran. And when she passed away, uh, he said when she passed away, she, she had got to, um, I, I forgot how many, just, just, but it was a lot that she could pray Qiyam al-Layl with it, without, you know, Mus'haf, without reading from Mus'haf. So we're talking about someone who's over 70 years old. So there's no ideal time to start memorizing the Quran. You just have to give it all your time. When you commit to the Quran, you have to, you have to forget everything else. Just stick with the Quran. Yeah. Uh, with the Quran, uh, there is no discrimination. Uh, there is no uh, limitations. It's just up to you, you and your truthfulness. The eldest person in this gathering tonight, whoever it may be, don't look around. He's able to memorize the Quran if he hasn't. Whether you are male or female, whether whatever position you are on, you can memorize the Quran. And there's nothing stopping you except yourself. You and your nafs and the shaitan, these three. That is it. If you battle those three, you memorize the Quran. Not only would you memorize, you memorize it faster than you thought. But can you do that? If you are able to control and tame yourself from these three places, yourself, your nafs, which can be considered the same thing, and the shaitan, you can do it, inshallah ta'ala. And I want to give one example. The Sheikh Hafizahullah, Sheikh Abdul Rashid, he mentioned the stories, again, a story that's public. Uh, with a brother he met in Belgium, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, he's a Moroccan brother. And the Sheikh said, I went to the masjid. When I went to the masjid, the Moroccans, they read in Riwayat Warsh and Nafi'. I sat down with them and they asked for me to read in Riwayat Khalaf and Hamza. I'm narrating exactly how the Sheikh said it. So the Sheikh, he said, I accepted their request. I began reading in that Riwayat. And the Sheikh, he said, I left a word in that Riwayat. And he said, this brother, he told me, he said, Sheikh, you left that word. And the word that the Sheikh left is in the Qira'a of Khalaf and Hamza, which is considered to be the hardest riwayah, by the way. It's very difficult. So he said, I accepted it from him, and I took what he said. And then they began reading until we got to that guy. And when we got to that guy, he read in Khalaf and Hamza as well. So when he read in this riwayah, I asked him, who taught you this riwayah? Faqala, he said, you taught me, O oh Sheikh. The Sheikh said, how did I teach you? I've never met you in my life before today. He said, Sheikh, you taught me bil ghayb. The Sheikh said, what do you mean bil ghayb? I don't understand what that means. The Sheikh, he said to him that you recorded these riwayat. It's online. It's on the internet. So I downloaded your qira'ah of Khalaf and Hamza. And he said, I did i'tikaf. That's the word he used. I did i'tikaf with this riwayah for two years. He then said to the Sheikh, look at how keen he was. He said, test me wherever you want. The Sheikh said, I will. The Sheikh tested him. Then the Sheikh, he said, the guy is not mutqin, he's not on the level of mastery. The Sheikh, he said, is on the level of ijazah. 
The Sheikh said I could have given him an ijazah there and then, but the condition of ijazah, you have to read the whole Quran. The Sheikh said I didn't have time to listen to the whole Quran. Not only that, after all of this, he presented a mushaf to the Sheikh that he produced in Khalaf and Hamza. A mushaf he made in another riwayah that he did. I don't, if that's not inspiration, I don't know what is. The man mastered the whole Quran in that riwayah in two years with no teacher. And then the man produced a mushaf by himself and presented it to the one he learned from online. That can be anybody here. But it requires for those three things to be battled yourself and the nafs and the shaitan. I think we'll come to a flow for questions in a minute. But uh, just following up on the point that this brother, Brother Ibrahim or Sheikh Ibrahim didn't have a teacher. But I think it is important generally to find a teacher and find someone that you can learn the Quran from and it's advised. Um, how would you advise someone to go about finding a teacher? What's the best way to find a teacher that is mutqin and that you are going to stick to and learn from? Uh, my advice would be uh, to firstly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you are requesting something great and we normally forget this element of dua as much as we are reminded uh, only few make a lot of dua so make a lot of dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you to the best person that you can learn the Quran from after this then I would seek a teacher based on two matters a teacher of Quran we're speaking about here firstly his understanding and comprehension of the Quran itself and the more learned he is with the Quran, the more you will become a learned person. Always remember, you cannot become better than the teacher during the time of study. Is it possible and has it been seen that there are students who surpass their teachers later on in life? Absolutely. But not at the time. Because at the time, you only have access to that person. So the level that that person is on, you will not surpass it because he only has that certain level. But later on, if you go and learn from other people and the more you get older, yes, you can pass one of your teachers. So if that's the case and you can never pass the teacher himself during the time of study, it's best for you to find as local as possible the one that you consider to know the Quran very well. That's the first thing. The second thing is try your absolute best. And this second one, uh, not enough people advise it to see and to find the Qur'an reaching this person's life. So if they just learn it in the Qur'an, but you don't really see, you're not moved. Like all night, nearly every question we were speaking about, one sheikh or one teacher or our mashayikh or our teachers. Why? It's not about the hif, it's about what we've seen from them, their hal. You know? So if you find a teacher who's upon such a hal and a condition, and you can see that he is combined between the knowledge and he is combined between the hal and how he lives, then this is the best teacher for you, inshallah. Zakallah khair, Sheikh. I think just for the Slido, it's hashtag Quran, Q U R A N for anyone wondering, inshallah. And we do have some questions from there. Uh, the first question going to Sheikh Abdul Rahman is How can a person fully commit themselves to the Quran and achieve high aspirations when they are held back by full time commitments such as work and education? That's, uh, that's up to you. يعني, it's up to the person. I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to give up you know, your work or your you know, education. But you have to just give the most time to, you, to the Quran. So if you go to, if you, go to uh, you, if you're studying in the university or مثلاً, you're working, you have a lot of time that you can actually مثلاً, open the mushaf and, and read. It's, it's not like you, when you go to work, you are busy all the time. You have a break, you have all that. I know um, a sheikh that he said he memorized the Quran <coughs> during his breaks and while he was driving to work. He memorized the whole Quran. So whenever he stops or مثلاً, he gets in a, in a traffic, he's, he opens the mushaf or on his phone, and he stopped reciting. And he finished the Quran in a, in a, in a, in a, like in a, um, يعني, a significant time. So it's up to you. You just put, prioritize, you know? If you prioritize the Quran, then inshallah, you will, you will, you will get to that point, inshallah. Zakla khair. 
the next question, Sheikh Jamal, is how does someone uh, improve their relationship and their connection with the Quran? Uh, how does somebody improve their connection with the Quran? Uh, on the top of my head now, I would say uh, always renew your intentions. And the best way to renew your intentions for the Quran is to do it only for wajhullah. Only for the sake of Allah. وَلَيْسَ لِوَجْهِ nas, Not for the sake of people. And Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentioned that earlier. Uh, it's very sad to hear sometimes that a person, he will say very openly in fact, he won't even hide it. He'll say, I'm learning the Quran so I want to become a qari. Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentioned that will come anyway. You don't have to make that your intention. Oh, I want to learn the Quran so I, become, I can become an imam. But when you learn the Quran, you will become an imam automatically. Don't make that your intention. And the ayah that I always uh, bring from the Quran when I'm talking about this is the end of Surah An-Naml. وَأُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَأَنْ أَتْلُوَ الْقُرْآنَ This is an amr from Allah, that you read the Quran for Allah's sake and not for anybody else's. The Prophet ﷺ said, I was commanded to be from amongst the Muslims and to read the Quran. For who? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is it. That's the best way. So if you find your intention changing and you find difficulty, always renew and restart, inshaAllah. Zakallah khair. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, do you have any advice for anyone that wants to become a hafiz but is surrounded by a bad crowd and negative people? Yeah. So, your heart, yani the, the, the answer for this, you have a heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, said in the Quran, ma Allah li min fi jawfi. You don't have two hearts, you have one heart. So you have to choose the path. With the tawfiq of Allah, you have to choose. So, but first, you have to make the intention and you start, you know, uh, going in that path. So, the hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talk about the jalis, your, your, whoever you're surrounded by. Al jalis al salih or jalis al su. Maybe all of us know, or most of us know this hadith. If you want to become يعني, uh, a good Muslim, for, uh, let's not talk about the Quran yet. If you want to become a good Muslim, you have to surround yourself by يعني, a good people, practicing uh, يعني, Muslims. Not with non مثلا, يعني, a, a bad crowd or negative people. They will drag you. A sahib sahib, that's what they say. A sahib sahib. So if you are surrounded by huffad or مثلا, tullab Quran or tullab, uh, tullab ilm, you will you will definitely um, get to that level or inshallah you can pass them with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you are surrounded, you choose your friends. You know, you choose the people who surround you. The hadith uh, of, the, of the person who killed a uh, hundred, you know, nafs, a hundred souls. The, the alim told that person, if you want to make tawbah, you have to leave your, your, your town. Because it's a very bad town with bad people. So you have to leave. So when he left, his toba was accepted. Just because he left, he made the intention and then he, he moved from that uh, town. So you have to do the same. If you want to be a hafiz, surround yourself by you know, positive people and good people. You know? And then inshallah, everything will become easy for you. The deen will become easy for you. The Quran will become easy for you. Going to the masjid will be easy for you. So I think that's the, that's the if Sheikh Jamal wants to add something to that. Sakhla khair. And Sheikh Jamal, is memorizing the Quran and the tafsir, or are memorizing the Quran and the tafsir interlinked? So a few questions have come in. Do I have to do them together? Is it better to do them together? Or is it better focus on memorizing first and then move on to uh, the tafsir and understanding and delving deep into that? This is a very, very common question that comes back again and again. And uh, you find really three camps maybe. Uh, those who push the memorization of the Quran alone, those who push the tafsir alone, but they don't push the tafsir alone. What they would say is, you have to understand the Quran, it's not about memorizing, it's not about this. So they're kind of canceling the memorization and they're pushing the tafsir. And then you find the third, which advise the people to do both. And this is the correct advice and why. 
the reason why it's the correct advice is if we start with the Arabic language, you have mastered the Arabic language, you could speak in the Arabic language. You don't know the Quran though. So now the Arabic language is no different from French or Spanish or English or any other language. It's just a language. But the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language so you understand it, you comprehend it, and you're mindful of it. That's what Allah said. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabian la'allakum ta'qilun. But that la'allakum ta'qilun is not there because anzalnahu Quranan Arabian, this Quran and Arabian that's in the Quran next to each other, we have made them separate and foreign from one another now. That's incorrect advice. And if we say memorizing the Quran alone, although it's more of a virtue, meaning if we were to suffice ourselves with one, logically, we shouldn't do either, to be honest. But if we were to say, who's better off? Somebody who knows the Arabic language and doesn't know Quran, or somebody who knows Quran but doesn't know the tafsir, for sure we'll say straight away, with confidence and certainty, the one who knows the Quran doesn't know the tafsir is better. Because you know the Quran, you are still rewarded without any tafsir. If you know the Quran, like the brother said over there, it's still a shifa without knowing the tafsir. If you know the Quran without tafsir, it's still an intercessor. You'll still go to Jannah. But if you learn the Arabic language, is that enough to open the doors of Jannah? No, it is not. But what we are saying is do both of them together. Everybody's an adult. You need to know what the Quran means. So memorize, understand. Do it like that. That's how the Sahaba they did it, and that's the best way to do it. I want to add something to Sheikh Jamal. The Sahaba used to say, uh, they said, one of the Sahaba said, when we were memorizing the Quran, we used to take 10 ayahs, and then those 10 ayahs, we, we, we memorize it, we understand it, we, we uh, practice it. So when they finished the Quran, they had everything. They yani immediately became ulama. That's why the Sahaba, they are udul. They are all ulama. Because when they memorized the Quran, they took 10 ayahs. They took their time. I heard, I don't know if it's uh, true or not, but I heard uh, Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab, he memorized Surah Al-Baqarah in 12 years. So 12 years, he gave Surah Al-Baqarah. How, definitely that means that when he finished Surah Al-Baqarah, he understood every, every single word of Surah Al-Baqarah. And he was, you know, uh, so we have to do the same. Like Sheikh Jamal said, you memorize the Surah, uh, you memorize the Quran and you understand it. That gives you more ajr. Sheikh Abdul Rahman, we had a few questions asking about the impact of sins upon memorizing. And a few people said that they feel like they're even sinning after memorizing the Quran or memorizing a portion of the Quran. Uh, does, do sins affect the memorization? And how do you overcome this? And how do you help and, and utilize the Quran to help you reduce the amount of sins that you are committing? Well, definitely, of course. Like the brother Zala Khair said, uh, Imam Shafi's Qasida, uh, he said, Shakawtu ila waki'in su'a hifdi fa'arshadani ila tarki al-ma'asi. You have to leave the sins to memorize the Quran. Because the Quran is nur. So the nur and the darkness cannot be in one heart. You have to choose either nur or darkness. And my father used to say that, and I think this is from Salaf uh, Salih. They said, Quran Maasi. And I'll give an example. So, للأسف الشديد, يعني, the, the, the shaitan has, you know, won against us in, in, especially in the music. Everybody, you know, if you ask someone uh, from, from uh, مثلا, يعني, uh, the youth, they memorize a lot of songs, a lot of music. They, they know it by heart. So how could they, uh, you know, put next to that the music, which is Kalam al-Shaytan, you put next to it Kalam al-Rahman. It's very hard. You just, you have to be like, it's, it's common sense. It can't be in one heart. So definitely, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, you know, protect you from sins because this is something that you can't do, like, uh, you know, um, by yourself without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protecting you from the shaitan. You can't do it by yourself because nafs ammara bisu. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you hidayah and then when, inshallah, and, and, and at the same time you try so hard and you do mujahada, mujahada nafs, 
from you know committing the ma'asi. All of us, we all have sins. None of us is ma'asum. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a sitr and maghfira and to prevent, you know, to, uh, you know, protect us from the sins. Allahumma ameen. Uh, another question that come, well, came a couple of times, Shaykh Abdurrahman, is that why was Shaykh Muhammad Ayyubi a favorite reciter? <laughs> and do you have a good imitation of him? Even if it's one ayah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I can't answer that. Uh, like, why? It's very hard. It's just, uh, you know, when you hear, when you listen to some Shaykh, you just, it just, you know, it sinks in. And it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-qalb yahwa ma yahwa. You know? And about the imitation, inshallah, ta'funi minha, inshallah. We'll add it to the growing list of things, inshallah, that the Sheikh is going to come back for, inshallah. Um, I wanted to kind of open the floor for maybe two or three questions because some brothers put their hands up. And then, inshallah, we're going to be rounding it up, and we're not going to, to run for much longer, inshallah, as uh, we are all enjoying it. But I think uh, we need to end at a reasonable time. So, inshallah, Akhi, you put your hand up, the brother here, inshallah, so she can start. لا أدري والله I think we answer that. يعني you just it's just commitment. You have to commit and and give time to the Quran. And of course that that couldn't happen without the help of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So you have to make a lot of du'a. The brother right at the back, inshallah. My advice uh, would be for the khushu. Uh, I think it's a misconception that a lot of us have, uh, like some of the mashayikh they mention, that if you have the Arabic language, you will have khushu. If you have the Arabic language, you may have khushu. Just like if you don't have the Arabic language, you may have khushu as well. And I'm sure everybody can relate with that. If I now ask a question, you guys have, uh, we have to ask you questions too. <laughs> How many people here have mastered the Arabic language? Raise your hand. If you, have if you understand the Arabic language, you don't have to be a professional, but you know Arabic to a level, to a decent level. Raise your hand. If you think you're not comfortable with Arabic, raise your hand. That's the majority. So the majority are not comfortable with Arabic. Okay, listen to my second question. If you have felt khushur in your life even once, raise your hand. See, how's that possible then? <laughs> if we say Arabic is the condition, we can't get the same number of hands. So that has just shown us now live that Arabic is a means, but Arabic is not necessarily going to equal khushur. Khushur mahalluhu al-qalb. The place that khushur happens and occurs is the heart. That's how you receive khushur. How is the condition of your heart? If your heart is healthy and your heart is alive spiritually, you are going to receive khushur. But if you learn the Arabic language, you learn the Quran, and you neglect the heart, there will be no khushu' coming. And the deal for this is that there were those who embraced Islam after not having Iman by hearing the Quran, and there were those who knew the Arabic language, but they weren't moved by the Quran. So all of these things we understand from our tradition in Islam, the answer to this question to sum up and to summarize again, it is to maintain and condition the heart all of the time, and then khushu' will come, inshaAllah. Inshallah, barakallahu feekum. I wanted to kind of uh, step back a little bit into a more personal note. I know both Sheikh Jamal and Sheikh Abdurrahman are of similar age. And mashallah, I, I think, um, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but you even 
and he got married at a similar time, two weeks apart, if I'm not mistaken. And Sheikh Abdul Rashid was there at both the weddings. Um, and, and you play, and mashallah, the Sheikh is close to both of you. So what role did Sheikh Abdul Rashid play in your journey with the Quran um, as a father and as a teacher? Well, I mean, يعني, looking up to my father, it's, it's, I think this is the biggest uh, inspiration, the biggest, re uh, not, I'm not going to say that, one of the reasons that uh, we wanted, uh, يعني, me personally wanted to memorize the Quran, but not, of course, not the only reason. As growing up, we didn't know better, you know? I didn't want to memorize the Quran. I was... Like you could say, like we took, we was, يعني, my father took me to the tafil when I when I didn't have a choice, but, and and he did everything, everything in his like power, to keep me in the tafil. So obviously when I growing up I wanted to, uh, I had, when I was a teenager, I had different things. You know I wanted to, um, be a method an athlete or play football whatever you know. And I used to actually ask my father, you know, I wanna, I wanna join a, a football club or whatever. But he would say, he would say one thing. He would not say no. He would say, once you memorize the Quran and I, and I test you, then you can go. And then, subhanallah, when I got to the, uh, a certain level, that خلاص, يعني, you just lose that, uh, you know, that uh, interest in in sports or whatever, you know. And maybe يعني, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني, we get to you get to an age and then you say, No, I have something more important, which is the Quran. So يعني, بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my father and uh, the only thing I can you know reward him or method of repay him is by dua for in his life and after uh, Allah subhanahu يعني, after his life. So that's the only thing that can do uh, you know repay him. Before Sheikh Jamal answers, you said you wanted to play football. Are you good at football? <laughs> no, not anymore. So I'm sure Sheikh Too many yani, injuries. Can we get nine Too players here and the Sheikh is the tenth? Too five many aside, injuries, yeah. so. <laughs> Hands are already going up, Sheikh. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, I think just going to Sheikh Jamal, inshallah, what role did Sheikh Abdul Rashid play in your life? Uh, it's very difficult to uh, answer that question. Uh, but just due to time constraints, uh, if there's one thing off the top of my head, uh, it's the fact that the Sheikh always, 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 and those who uh, witnessed the Quran khatma we had the other day uh, heard his reminder. Subhanallah. It, sometimes you want to believe with certainty, but you stop yourself because you don't have certainty in all matters. It is Allah who does. But you think that, I don't think that he can be doing it without ikhlas. Taban, we're not saying anything like that because that's something that Allah knows but why do you even think like that because of how he speaks about this kitab and how he encourages people with this kitab I'll just give one example one of the examples things always make sense I remember when the Sheikh attended physically that class in the East London Mosque and we were backstage before we went in I just wanted to remind him so I said Sheikh I just want to remind you that there's a lot of people here and the Sheikh, uh, Sheikh is a free class and we don't, none of our classes are chargeable, never charged for a class ever. And I remember he said to me, he said, if you were to charge the Quran, you're no longer with us. You're no longer a student, you're no longer anything to us, I don't know you. He said that to me. He didn't say it in a harsh way, but he said it in a way of ta'deeb and a way of nasiha. So what he means by that is that I know you don't charge, but always don't, don't even go to that path anyway. And it's true. A person is not just saying this. He taught me, I've been learning from him for over 10 years now. And the way I feel like I am Sheikh Abdul Rahman's brother and I feel like the Sheikh is my father and he's given me a space in their house and in their heart. He didn't do any of that for money. I can't mention stories publicly. I did it, I crashed the Sheikh's car, I had accidents, I caused him problems. <laughs> but the Sheikh, all of the time, he's only helped me. And that's what a truthful, sincere man would do. So for me, it is that really understanding that the Quran if you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, then you will become a blessed person. Inshallah. Uh, I think I mentioned you guys are similar age. Was there ever any competitiveness between you two? <laughs> no. Is there any stories? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> oh, alhamdulillah. 
لا شيخ جمال ما شاء الله يعني هي هوب مي ان مراجعه القران وي يوز تو اني تايم وي جيت توجذر وي وي دو وات وي كول سبع الصوماليز دي سي ذا كول سبع اتس لايك وين هي ريدز ا بارت اند اي ريد ا بارت اند وي يوز تو دو حتى سام تايمز ايه جست وان ايه وان فيرس وان فيرس اند جزاه الله خير شيخ جمال اوز اولويز ذير فور مي جزاك الله خير اي دونت نو اف يو ريمبر But the first ijazah that the Sheikh gave me, you gave it to me. Yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> you gave it to me. You gave it to me. That's I think when I met you. I think you were still studying in Mecca or something. In Mecca. Yeah. No, no, that's before. Before. And mashallah, I remember. So that's how the bond really started. The Sheikh gave it to Abdul Rahman, who then gave it to me after that. Mashallah. Sheikh, I think I do have one closing segment, but before that, I wanted to go through two or three questions quickly, and this is very briefly. Uh, one advice for someone, uh, how do you instill the Qur'an in a young child? I know this could be a talk by itself, but yeah, any simple words of advice, what, you, what would you advise? Uh, me, I'd advise uh, the children, uh, tahbib, and this is what the Shaykh always says, tahbib, tell them about the virtues of the Qur'an and the special status of the people of the Qur'an like we do for the worldly things. When we're encouraging the kids to go to school and wake up on the Monday morning after the weekend, they don't like that. But you remind them of why they're doing it. And similarly, when you become older and you're studying uh, secular education and the higher level, you remind yourself of why you are here in university and the career path that you want and the money you're going to earn. And, and, and. So you, this is what you teach the children. Similarly, for all aspects of life, you tell the young girl that is wearing the hijab that you don't tell her to wear it because it's wajib. That is the shara'i way. But there's a way of tahbib. You tell her that because she is a muslimah, and all of the Muslimat from the beginning of time until now, this is their path. And they are beautiful women. They cover up because Allah ordained this. And Allah Jalla wa ala has allowed them to reveal their beauty in other places and other times. When you do this, they realize their status. And then after they do it. When you told them about the Quran like that, the young children, they realize the status of the Quran and then they do it. But if you told them just to do it, I don't think that is a very um, encouraging way. Sheikh Abdurrahman, you moved out of uh, Qatar for your Dirasat al Ulya. And there's a brother that's asked, he's traveling to Egypt in three weeks' time. What advice do you have for him as he's starting his journey and seeking knowledge there? Um, yani the only for, for, for studying Quran, yani? yeah. For memorizing Quran. Yeah, yani starting my Quran journey. Just the only thing I would uh, yani keep, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and make dua all the time. Uh, my father said uh, that when he was young, when he was seven or eight years old, he used to make dua. He loved the Quran so much that he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every sujood to help him memorize the Quran. He used to say, Ya Rabbi, alimna Quran. In every single sujood. And you don't know when, when uh, Abwab al-Sama is open. You don't know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your dua. So my only advice to you, just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the other things, we, we, we said it earlier. So the only thing I would leave with you, inshallah, is dua. Sakallah khair. Last question to Sheikh Jamal as well. Sheikh told us that his most difficult surah was surah Taghabun. What was your most difficult surah? I had many. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I had too many. Uh, and subhanAllah, the surahs I found difficult when I tell people they don't believe me. I found Surah Yusuf difficult. Yes. And Surah Yusuf, everybody relates with it. It's got a beautiful story. Surah Yusuf, one of them. Surah Al Nur, I found it difficult. But that one is a bit difficult. Surah Al Ahzab, I had loads of surah, and I still do. There's too many surah. Before we close, Sheikh Abdul Rashid's name was mentioned a lot, and both of you are well connected with the Sheikh. So I wanted to end with who can do a better imitation of the sheikh mm. is it the student or is it the son so we're going to start when, when we started the opening recitation we started with you sheikh abdurrahman so this time we are going to start with sheikh jamal inshallah and we are going to hear imitations for sheikh abdur rashid sufi hafizahullah i don't want to embarrass myself <laughs> <laughs> let me go last <laughs> i should go go ahead أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفلم يهد لهم كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون يمشون في مساكنهم إن في ذلك لآيات لأولي النهى ولولا كلمة سبقت من ربك لكان لزاما وأجل مسمى فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل غروبها ومن آناء الليل فسبح وأطراف النهار لعلك ترضي ولا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم زهرة الحياة الدنيا لنفتنهم فيه ورزق ربك خير وابقي وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واصطبر عليها لا نسألك رزقا لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبة للتقوي I lost, I'm telling you already, I lost it. <coughs> can follow that. It's very good. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa qala alladhina la yarjuna liqaa ana lawla unzila alayna almalaikatu aw nari rabbana Laqad istakbaru fi anfusihim wa ataw utuwan kabira Yawma yarawna almalaikata la bushri yawma idhin lil mujrimin wa yakuluna hijaran mahjura وقدمنا إلى ما عملوا من عمل فجعلناه هباء منثورا أصحاب الجنة يومئذ خير مستقرا وأحسن مقيلا ويوم تشقق السماء بالغمام ونزل الملائكة تنزيلا الملك يومئذ الحق للرحمن وكان يوما على الكافرين عسيرا ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتا ليتني لم اتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا وقال الرسول يا رب إن قومي اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا وكذلك جعلنا لكل نبي عدوا من المجرمين وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ هَادِيًا وَنَصِيرًا صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله As a show of hands, who thinks Sheikh Jum... No, I'm joking, we're not going to go there I wanted to ask actually, Sheikh, which year was the imitation from? It's not recent, is it? No, no, it's very short This is uh, it's in the so, 90s So the Sheikh has opted for the old style, Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi <laughs> And then Sheikh Sajjamal Jamal opted for the more recent style But may Allah Azza preserve the Sheikh and these two uh, products of the, the school of the Sheikh and his teaching. And may Allah uh, protect and bless everyone here in this masjid and everyone that is watching us Amen. and everyone that is on that journey embarking to continue uh, embarking on the journey of memorizing the Quran. Amen. May Allah give him the consistency to, consistency to continue. And may Allah Azza wa allow us all to be a part 
of the people of the Quran, Ahlullahi wa khasatuh. Jazakumullah khair all for listening. May Allah reward you all and bless you all. And may Allah protect you and your families, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.